Randy was just reporting that Joe Biden's going to the I-4 corridor. We're talking about the Orlando area to Tampa when he goes to visit. That is a swing area, but it's also an interesting area because, as you say, that is where a lot of Puerto Ricans live. And if you're trying to maybe mitigate or cancel out the Cuban vote, that may be one way to do it. So this is just Florida, though. One thing is also true, though, is that Joe Biden underperformed with Latino voters in the primaries as well. Why? So Bernie Sanders was a big reason for that. He, uh, in states like Nevada, focused heavily on Latino voters. Now, again, the Latinos in Nevada are very different than the ones in Florida. Biden actually uh, outperformed Sanders with Latinos in Florida. He also outperformed Sanders uh, or ran about even with Sanders in with Latinos in Arizona, which are predominantly of Mexican descent. Yeah. Uh, in a lot of other states like California, though, Biden did did um, did not do so well. And one of the things that has haunted him from the primary to now is what happened during the Obama administration and this view among a number of Latinos that Obama was, quote, this deporter in chief. Uh, and those mass deportations that occurred. And so they've been looking to Biden to address that issue. Biden has said that he would immediately work to reunify families that were separated at the border. He has uh, addressed the issue of the deportations under Obama and said that he would take a different track without explicitly critiquing what happened under that administration. So those, again, are going to be issues that Latinos are looking to hear from him between now and Election Day. Very quickly, some of your own reporting on the ground there uh, in Florida has been, there has been some resonance with some of the conspiracy theories that have been pushed by either directly the Trump campaign or its supporters. How so and to what extent? So there's a, a lot of disinformation, QAnon conspiracy theories. We know that Trump has pushed QAnon uh, conspiracy theories himself, but that are permeating Latino voters' uh, channels on WhatsApp, or also on Spanish language radio. And so that's a big concern among Democrats that if that infects Spanish language radio, that that could potentially it, You know, look, I mean, I mean, at the beginning there, it was definitely off to a sort of rocky start, right? Like it looked like she was just blaming Bernie Sanders for, right. <laughs> blaming Bernie Sanders for uh, Joe Biden's weakness. But I, I do think that, um, and, and look, it is true that Bernie Sanders did point out Obama's record on deportation. Bernie Sanders did point that out, especially people, maybe not b always Bernie Sanders himself directly, but especially his campaign was pointing that out and, uh, you know, making, you know, like saying, hey, look, you should you should question Joe Biden on that on that issue. Right. And so it is true that uh, to that extent, that might not have helped him. But. The point being, though, is that stuff was going to get out anyway, right? Like, it's right. not like it's not like Trump's going to go easier on Biden than Bernie Sanders did, right? It's and all going to come out exactly. And when it comes to this, the deportation stuff, it's a real issue. Like, this is not it's not like uh, it's not like some soft issue where it's just misinformation. No, that's that's real. Obama's issues yeah. with deportation were real. I mean, look, Donald Trump is doing terrible possibly i mean some of the stuff that we just saw come out definitely worse stuff at the borders than uh border than uh obama was doing but obama didn't have a great record either and biden being linked to obama uh you know definitely doesn't help him in that in in that regard i mean what we saw from joe biden is a sort of typical vice presidential strategy which is that all the good things that happens under Bo obama he takes credit then all the bad things he just sort of distances himself and says oh well i was only the vice president you know i didn't agree with the blah 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 you know so that's the strategy that we saw especially during the primaries come out and some of the stuff that he's doing right now um but uh, you know, when it when it comes to when it comes to this particular, this does seem to be an issue which is really resonating with Latino voters, and it is something which is hurting oh, uh, hurting Biden in the state of Florida again, a state that's going to be absolutely critical. Republicans have not won the, the presidency without winning the state of Florida since Calvin Coolidge. I think that was 1925. I could be wrong about the year, maybe 1924, uh, but uh, it's it's been a long time, basically, right? 1920s. Right. I can say that one. Um, so this is a state that republicans absolutely need and if democrats win it republicans are done for 
Now that right. doesn't mean I mean because some of the stuff that we've been seeing in the rest, or excuse me, in the Sun Belt, for example, where Democrats have actually not only been outperforming polls, that's really an important part, but also Democrats have been flipping states in the uh, in the Sun Belt for whatever reason. The polls have been under undervaluing Democrats in the Sun Belt specifically, um, partially because of some of the Hispanic Latino stuff that we were just talking about earlier um, and the difficulties with polling that demographic. Um, but point being that uh, Joe Biden might be able to win without Florida, but the Republicans absolutely cannot win without Florida. So if Joe Biden can win Florida, that's it. That's it. They're done for. So Joe Biden really should be targeting in in Florida. And he, again, has to really be speaking, um, speaking to these concerns about deportation. And so far, we haven't seen a really good or at least coherent message about how he's going to be doing that. Yeah, yeah, I think I mean, this is kind of the key. And I, and I don't really see it changing now. He's followed it this far. I mean, do we really expect that he's going to change much in the next, what, seven weeks or six weeks or whatever, seven weeks until until we see this? I mean, I think yeah, that's kind of the thing. And, and it could be something like that. Yeah. It could be that we see a completely different next whatever, seven weeks or something, because if these debates go through, I mean, there's all this talk about the form the debate should take. And I actually, I think some of them could be a great idea, but I think it could be, it could be just be a disaster. I mean, Trump has realized at this point, he can say almost anything and get away with it. Well, and look, um, So who knows what they're going to say when they're up there talking to each other. And, and look, you know, where, you know, let's just look at it in, in terms of polling and look at it sort of in a vacuum, not knowing who the, who the players are. We can predict that the candidate who's way down low is going to try to f pull some crazy fastball because he has possibly right. or she has possibly more to gain from doing something right. off the wall to really get it up than the candidate who's significantly up and doesn't really want to rock the boat. So we can expect – um, maybe a little bit of a, a sort of an erratic actor, right? Like it, the the weird thing right. about it is it's actually rational for the candidate who's way down to be a little bit erratic, right? right? And so that's something that we would expect in a vacuum and, you know, bring that over to carry that over to Donald Trump, take it out of the vacuum. What does that mean? An erratic Donald Trump who's hammering in at Joe Biden, that could be a nightmare, could be a disaster for Joe Biden if he, if he isn't careful and if he isn't well prepared, right? Now, Right. Last time around with the Bernie Sanders Joe Biden debate, somehow he was he had the energy that he didn't have in other debates. So he's going to have to bring that a game. Otherwise, it really could be uh, very, very bad. Now, the other thing, though, Chris, that we need to talk about is I think it's over 50 percent of voters now say that there is no situation in which they see themselves voting for Donald Trump. That's yeah. that, that. Now, look, uh, that doesn't mean right. That doesn't mean that uh, Donald Trump can't win. Because not right. all those voters turn out, and it depends where those voters turn out at. Right. But that's the key. Uh, yeah. Right. The, I mean, if they're saying, "Look, there's nothing that you can do," it's going to be pretty hard for Donald Trump to try to break into those voters. Uh, but who knows? That could be all the more reason why we could see an erratic Donald Trump on the debate stage. Yeah, and as we saw last time, and we saw in 2000, you don't need over 50 percent of the voters in order to win. You just got to have a few of the right ones in the right places. Uh, in order to win that. And I think, yeah, the Donald Trump situation could be crazy because um, he's essentially a caged animal, I think, at this point. If he does not win re-election, I think he is in for some of, uh, let's we'll just say, unpleasantries when he leaves office, assuming that, uh, you know, he leaves office and stuff. You know, he's going to find himself, I think, in some legal trouble from, a, from some of these states, especially New York, that are not so happy on the state level with what he, what he did. And he's not going to be able to get away from that, at, you know, with a federal pardon or a commutation or anything like that. So uh, I, I think he really is going to feel like a caged animal that's got to win at all costs. And since he is since he is, it's like you were saying, he the person on the bottom. Right. And he is so desperate because of the consequences of losing. I, we could see anything. I mean, at, at the very yeah. least, it's going to be entertaining. It could be horrible for the country and for the, the presidency and how we view the presidency. But I, I think it will be entertaining. And, you know, I, I think in that kind of a situation, I think he does outmatch Joe Biden anyways. Even if it was a restrained mm -hmm. Donald Trump, I think he probably uh, beats beats Biden. Well, Although I have to say Biden outperformed what I thought he was going to do against Bernie Sanders as well. So maybe he'll have it in him. Hopefully he's training around the clock right now for a, for for a, a debate, Trump debate. Right. But who knows? 
Well, I mean, the other thing when it comes to Donald Trump, though, is he has a record this time, right? Like in 2016, the the narrative going around was that Donald Trump was this monster. You shoot him and he just gets bigger and you can't take him out. That Donald Trump is some kind of Teflon animal in some ways. Maybe polarization played into some of that and it wasn't just Donald Trump. But regardless, now that Donald Trump has a record, we've seen that he is vulnerable. He seems to be vulnerable on the issue of COVID, right? He seems to be like, you hit him on that issue, he really does go down. He really can get injured um, on the issue of COVID. And um, that's where Joe Biden really needs to hit and where Joe Biden needs to really hammer in on. Now, I do want to go back to that clip that we just watched for a quick second there, um, because she mentioned their WhatsApp. This is actually a really big problem in the Latino community when it comes to misinformation. WhatsApp has a lot of conspiracy theories floating around, a lot of misinformation, and it's used by the Hispanic, by the Latino community at a much higher rate than by uh, the general population, the population at large. And um, again, lots of misinformation and conspiracy theories, QAnon stuff gets spread on that. And uh, I was listening to a podcast um, just the other day, and they were saying that, uh, they, you know, they were doing sort of a focus group in, like, sort of Hispanics. And, you know, whenever, like, just pr he was saying, like, and predictably, any time that I hear someone bring up some misinformation, some, well, actually, I read, it's like, well, where do you read it? It's almost always on WhatsApp that they actually read that bit of misinformation on. So, you know, this is actually a really big issue. And I do think that the Democratic Party going forward is going to need to um, study WhatsApp a little bit more closely, figure out how they can start leveraging that app in order to message where the voters are. Um, yeah. I think that that's going to be something that's going to be really important for Democrats to do moving forward. So I just, you know, wanted to mention that because um, that's uh, that's an area where, you know, look, if you're on the if you're on the ground running a campaign, you've got to you've got to move quick. And this is one of those issues where um, if you're going to want to win and target Latino voters, that's where you're going to have to target. And that's something that Democrats have been basically just dropping the ball on. And there's a lot of sort of uh, sort of conservative Hispanics who are absolutely dominating WhatsApp right now.